Deputy Prime Minister Barnaby Joyce has just begun a media conference. Let's have a listen in. Have wanted to know where their product comes from and the proportion of where it comes from. In the past, we have had uh, the, the vagaries of things being notated as made in Australia, uh, made of Australian important ingredients, uh, possibly passed over Australian airspace, um, could have seen Australia if on telly at some point in time in its life, but it didn't actually tell us where the product came from. What we have now is a labelling system that is being introduced, and I want to commend the work that's been done uh, by, minute, by, by Kelly and by Fiona over such a long period of time to make sure that we deliver back to the Australian people honesty, honesty in labelling. Uh, our labelling system will allow people to see two incredibly important components. The component of how much this involves Australian workers and Australian jobs, because we believe in the right of the Australian people to know where their product is manufactured with. And of course, uh, that assists by the, uh, the green triangle and how it uh, tells you where the product is actually put together. In the bottom, we have how much of this product actually comes from Australian farms. Uh, this is vitally important. People want to know when they're buying their tomato base for their, for, uh, for their pasta, whether these are Australian tomatoes or tomatoes from somebody somewhere else. People want to know when they buy a can of product, if it's a home, home brand can of product, is it actually from our home or is it from somewhere else? People have a right to know this because it's with their money. Uh, this is something that will now roll out over the next two years. Some people are already starting on it with it now. It'll tell you the proportion of the product and how much comes from Australia and whether this is an issue that has meant that your fellow Australians have been employed in producing it. Uh, this is something I think that clearly shows the Australian people we've listened to them, we've acted and we have delivered. And it is yet, yet it's now another extension with my colleagues of things that we have fought for and delivered through the agricultural white paper as well as uh, all the other requirements that is, that is noted uh, in the past. Now I'm going to hand over to, uh, to Kelly and then also to Fiona. Kelly. Thanks very much, Barnaby. Today I chaired the Consumer Affairs Ministers' Meeting. It's a meeting of all of the Consumer Affairs Ministers right across the country and also includes New Zealand. And today I can announce that we had three, three very, very big wins for consumers. The first, as Barnaby has mentioned, is the new labelling for country of origin. This will allow consumers to know exactly what it is that they have paid for and where the ingredients come from and where the product has been made. We had another big win for consumers because consumers now, when they go to the supermarket and when they pick out different eggs and work out that they want to purchase free-range eggs, they will have confidence that from today they are going to be getting exactly what they paid for. And the third big win for consumers today is a full review of the consumer laws, which will make our consumer laws fit for purpose so that consumers are put first, first and foremost, every single time to make sure that the laws uh, apply to them and that they can be confident uh, that the laws work for them. Uh, just on free range eggs, let me say this. Uh, we know it's important that consumers have confidence in getting what they paid for and that's why we have announced for the first time an information standard that will allow consumers to be confident that chooks that are free range chooks have meaningful and regular access to the range. They'll also be able to compare products. We have today announced a minimum standard for stocking density, uh, 10,000 chooks uh, per hectare, which is one chook uh, every square metre. That's a minimum standard. But of course, those people who want to label their product with less chooks uh, per hectare can make that very clear to the consumer and the consumer will... Anyone feel like a bacon and egg roll right now? All right, let's continue listening in very much at the heart of this government. Giving them the information to be able to make those choices is also at the heart of this government. I'd like to hand over to Fiona. 
The Nationals have been pushing for clearer labelling for a very long time and I am delighted to be part of the coalition government that's delivered in this area. There's never been a more exciting time to be a regional Australian. Oh no. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> What, what we've seen, what we've seen with this announcement, is for the first time people to be able to see in supermarkets at a glance the product that's uh, grown and produced in Australia. Whether you're from Gundagai, Gympie, or Gippsland, for the first time you'll be able to go into your supermarket and see very clearly how much of that product is Australian. This is terrific news for people out in our communities, for our regional workers, for regional jobs and for our farmers. As a farmer myself, it is tremendous news. It's about getting a fair go for our farmers, for our food producers and making sure that we do what people want to be able to do and that is buy Australian. And Tamworth and Turak and Tamora <laughs> and all those other places. <laughs> So if we just quickly have a look through this, so if you, um, sorry about that, yeah. if we've got here, this is just what you want. What we have here is Australian workers and all Australian product, great outcome. Here, um, well, a lot, of Australian, a lot of Australian product, but still put together in Australia. Um, here, well, almost, almost all Australian. And the, there is the right for more information to be put on the label. If people want to put more information they can, it's going to allow gradations of 10%. So it really is going to be, quite precise. So uh, all in all, this is something we've fought, we've fought for, we've delivered on. This is a government that delivers. Now, I have to take a couple of questions. Well, the one on the left, is that grown and made in Australia as well? Well, what we've had, well, that's what we've seen there. We've it's been put together in Australia. So let's say it's a can of tomatoes. It was at a SPC, and they put it together in Australia, and all the product in it has come from Australia. So, so you just say grown and made? It just well, it's, uh, that's grown in Australia, and that means it's made in Australia. Right. That's right. It's and the 10% increments, is that going to be, it sounds pretty red tape heavy, you've got to go... No, it's actually... Well, we're allowing seasonal variations, uh, but it'll actually say seasonal variations. Um, it's going to be implemented over the next two years. You've got to remember right now there's already a, a high regulatory requirement because people have to determine whether something is made in Australia or grown in Australia or made of Australian imported ingredients or product of Australia. And to be quite frank, the mums and dads, um, when you said product of Australia, made in Australia, when we tested it, mm. they didn't really know what the difference was. Yeah, so when you say it'll allow for seasonal variations, does that mean people will be able to label for the best case scenario, that is 70% yep. of this in a best case is made in Australia? What it, what, allows, uh, what it allow is uh, seasonal variation, but it'll actually state that. And if you want further information, if you want to dive digger, deeper for further information, you can. You can go on the website and get it. Um, so what it will say is over, uh, over a period of time, uh, this is the, the average of what is in it, if it says seasonal variation. And if, if the consumer says, well, I want to know more about that, they have the capacity, and this is also part of it, to go on the website and find out. Why doesn't it tell people where the food has come from? Because you might have some uh, product that has gone through a range of countries before it arrived here, and we have to keep the regulatory burden low. Um, and it, how, how far back are we going to follow a, a, a can of tomatoes from overseas? If it went from Italy to China and from South America? Because sometimes we find that these products have multiple, have multiple venues which they came from. Or they've come from when, they, when they've actually canned multiple places. Uh, now, we can't be responsible for things that um, are, are beyond our shores and beyond our powers to assess. Assistant Minister, can I ask you, Tasmania's done some modelling saying under this income tax proposal, each taxpayer would have to pay another four and a half thousand dollars to get them up to their uh, funding they would have otherwise. Is that something the federal government could compensate? That sort of well, I think I think first we're very keen just to take questions on the Thank consumer. You country of origin labelling, free range eggs. So if we can extinguish those questions first, I'm very happy to take questions after that. So do I, in regards to the free range egg yes. definition, um, meaningful and regular access, what exactly does that mean and how can that be policed? Um, does it not still leave a little bit of a grey area for what um, the farmer thinking meaningful is this and, and whatnot? So there will be um, a very clear understanding as to what that means. It means that the chook is able to get out of the barn, it's able to scratch around in the pasture and it's able to range. And uh, being 
not impeded in that range it is exactly what we mean by free range eggs. At the moment there was a lot of confusion that forcing chooks out into the range uh, on most days in all sorts of weather conditions wasn't necessarily going to be in the best interests of the chooks. And so you need to have a sensible common sense definition of free range, which is what we're delivering on today. You also need to be able to provide consumers with certainty that when they go to the supermarket that they're getting what they're paid for. And you also need to deliver certainty for farmers to know that they're doing the right thing and that they can invest in their industry, that they can innovate so that consumers get what it is that they expect and demand from those producers as well. Minister, there was an argument between 1500 so so the argument has been about creating a minimum standard here and I think that's important to note that this is a minimum standard that we've set in place for the very first time uh, which is why it is such an important announcement uh, we say there is going to be a cap of no more than 10,000 chooks per hectare. Uh, that is the maximum cap. But of course, uh, those people who have different methods of, of farming free range eggs may choose to only have 1,500 chooks. They will be able to, again, for the first time, put that on the label of their product so that when a consumer walks into the supermarket and wants to compare, they'll be able to see the stocking density of, of one particular product of maybe 1,500 chooks uh, versus another, which might have 10,000. And if they want to choose to pay for that product, which is a 1,500 chook stocking density, they'll be able to make that choice now because of the information standard that we have put in place. How hard was it for you to find the game time? Well, we've worked incredibly hard with a whole range of uh, interested stakeholders on this, from farmers to consumers. There were more than 149 submissions. We received around about 7,000 emails as part of this process. And I have worked very, very hard with all of the state and territory ministers to get to the point today where we're able to have, for the first time, an information standard uh, for free range eggs. That can give people confidence when they go to the supermarket, they're going to get what they pay for. Minister Joyce, will you lobby the Federal Treasurer to make the agricultural land register public? Look, uh, I think uh, it's very important that we understand that the ATO collects information that is confidential. And I can completely, being an accountant, I can completely understand why our clients uh, say, well, we, don't, we, we want to give you the information, but we don't particularly want all our private details um, for, for public display. Nonetheless, we, I'm sure we can work to a, a mechanism of filtering out those which are, are, are pertinent to their private details and those which the public have a, a right to know. Uh, this will be coming back on the 2nd of uh, July. I think that, that it'll be tabled on the 2nd of July. At that point in time, uh, the Treasurer will have the capacity to uh, be part of that determination of, of what is in the public's interest and what is actually private. Uh, the ATO have stated no more than what the law is. That is, that information that's given to them is private and in confidence, and we have to now make sure that uh, what we deliver is the information that people want to know about who owns who owns what or what, how much of our land mass is owned by people from overseas. Uh, that's what we've been fighting for. That's what we'll deliver on. That's what we, that's what you, the Australian people ask for. Uh, but the Australian people also ask for privacy with their taxation matters, and we'll be making sure we deliver that. But in Parliament, you said it looks like the land for properties, so people see who owns what. That's not what we're getting. Well, so I'd, is I'd, that what you want to see? Well, I've, I've, I've seen, you can see through uh, the Torrens title system and through uh, so many other venues uh, of who actually owns what. Uh, most real estate agents will be able to tell you who owns what. Um, now I want to make sure that uh, with that information and with the further information we've received and working with the Treasurer and taking into account uh, the privacy concerns of people's taxation affairs, uh, that we deliver back to the Australian people uh, something that's vastly more transparent than they're getting at the moment. Uh, we will do that. Uh, this will be uh, with the Treasurer by the 2nd of July. Uh, then we have the capacity to, to balance these competing interests and that's precisely what we'll do. Minister Joyce, new has come out uh, 
put that in your electorate, showing uh-huh. that the majority of voters would support a more compassionate approach to the resettlement and processing of asylum seekers, current, more, more compassionate than the one that's currently offered by both major parties. Do you think that you're in step with your voters when it comes to the issue of asylum seekers? Well, you should ask Mr Eddie Whitten um, in my electorate, who I work with in a refugee advocacy group. But on, but on the issue of processing and resettlement, it seems that more people would prefer... Um, we are doing our part in Tamworth, and I've been part of those meetings, to help uh, the resettlement of uh, refugees from the Syrian crisis. Uh, I don't, uh, to be quite frank, it is something I'm very passionate about. Mr. Minister, can I take you to the Tasmanian comments? They won't support this change. They say each taxpayer would be on $4,500 to make up for getting complex tax per taxpayer. How will the federal government know? So tomorrow there is going to be a COAG meeting where the ministers come together to talk through these big and important issues. Uh, I'm not going to preempt those discussions. Uh, a lot is said both outside of the discussions and also in the room. And I think it's important that we see what comes out of the meeting tomorrow before making any preemptive judgments. Can, 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 I just say, can I just say something just briefly there? I'd like to also acknowledge Tony Ma at the back. Yeah, you thought you'd got away from us. Tony Ma from the NFF and also acknowledge the, the work Tony Ma's done with, uh, with Country of Origin Labor and Ed Eggs. Sorry, but would you acknowledge that it appears that there needs to be some sort of compensation? When you look at the tax on the cake of Tasmania compared to well, us here in Canberra, there's a massive difference. So the, uh, the, the Prime Minister has actually made some comments in relation to these matters. Uh, on early morning radio today, and I, I think his comments stand, and I'd refer you back to those comments. Very one last question. Last question. Joyce, what do you, uh, Tony Drums put his hand up to run in Murray, mm-hmm. the National Party to step out of the Korean State Parliament. Um, how do you see um, his potential to win that seat? How important is that seat? Well, I'll, I'll, I'll tell you one thing. The last thing I ever do is start getting in front of pre selectors and giving them my <laughs> views on who they should pre select. I'm certain that uh, that would be the kiss of death. So. I'm sure that, that both the National Party and the Liberal Party will be putting forward excellent candidates and, um, and then it will be the right of the people of Murray to determine who they want. And now to prove to you that um, if you can be in a confined space and get free and open access to the outside, <laughs> we, like free-range chooks, will head in that direction. <laughs>